Hi, this is Crystal from DaughtersOfTheCreator.com. Thank you for joining me today for our Sundays at 7 uh, chat. And uh, I think last week I had the Super Bowl, and this week I guess we might have the Grammys. I don't know. Um, I actually have just been so busy. I'm hardly paying attention to the TV anymore, but, or at least today I'm not paying attention. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what does it mean to be free. Um, I was having a conversation uh, sometime and a person was sharing to me some of the, the difficulties they were having in life, but it wasn't like just sharing, it was kind of like launching it, you know, and I remember thinking to myself as I, as I was walking away from that conversation, like, man, I got, I got problems too, you know, I got situations in my life going on as well, and uh, as I was um, thinking about that and and uh, trying to process it, I mean, I actually kind of got irritated and found myself, you know, later that evening thinking about it. And I realized that even though we had the same sort of issues, kind of, our perspective was different. Because my perspective comes from a place of knowing Christ. My perspective comes from a place of saying, you know, God, um, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to deal with all these problems, but I can talk to God about it. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just one of those things where um, we just constantly uh, struggle with um, how do I respond because I know I have Christ, you know? And so every problem, every situation, it filters through Christ, you know? It filters through God's fingers of love. And so sometimes what we can do, and I know I know what I did, is you get caught up in the emotion, you get caught up in the world and caught up in the flesh and you forget, oh, the difference between me and you is Christ. And Christ makes a difference. And I forget, you know, I have freedom every day in Christ that I take for granted. And so today I just want to share a little bit about what does it mean to be free? And it's coming from John 8, 36. So if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And, um, and I want to just talk a little bit about what that is. So using the word free as an acronym, the first thing is to remember we are forgiven of our sins. And I have some scriptures, Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Jeremiah 38, 8, or I'm sorry, Jeremiah 33, 8. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me. I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. And 1 John 1, 9, if we, are, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And see, we don't want to miss the beauty of being forgiven. We are all sinners. Hey, Carmen. Thanks for joining me. I was wondering if I was going to have any company today. <laughs> We're all sinners, and not one of us, not one, is born without sin. And there's only one way. I mean, just think about it. People are born every day. Hundreds, thousands of people come into this earth, and there's only, and every last one of them are sinners. And there's only one way to be free. And that's through knowing Christ. And God chose us before the foundation of the world that, hey, you're going to be saved. And, you know, and forgiven. And I remember, I remember um, back when I was in my um, college years, coming home one day and just really feeling lost and alone and falling on my face before God and crying out in the basement um, that I was sorry for my sins. I don't know how I'm going to live right. You're going to have to help me, God. And I just remember after having that time of confession and repentance, just the wave um, of forgiveness that just came over me. And, and, and again, it's not to say that, well, I experienced that and I never sinned again. Well, hello. The Bible says if we say we don't sin, we're liars. You know, it's, we do sin. Um, but we can go to Christ and we can, 1 John 1, 9, confess it and be cleansed of all unrighteousness. What changed in me wasn't that I never sinned again. What changed is that I experienced the forgiveness of God in such a way that I was solid in the, my insurance of my salvation. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, not only had God forgiven me, but that he was my friend. He was my confident that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Because you know what? I was going to go on to sin again 
in some way and have to ask God forgiveness, but I wasn't going to him in a way like, like he left me or he deserted me because of my sin. And so there was just this, this God connection that I'm telling you to this day still exists still exists when I sin or I do something or I say something wrong, think something wrong, and I go to God and say, you know what, I blew it, I'm sorry, I need your help to overcome this. I never ever struggled again with feeling like God was like, Crystal, get away from me, you're so dirty. You know, I always felt him like, come on, hun. come on, come on, come on, come on back, come on, get on my lap, come on. You know, he just, he's just a good father, right? So F is that we are forgiven of our sins. R is the release. So what does it mean to be free? Release from the heavy hitters of fear, anxiousness, regret, shame, and guilt. Again, these are things we as believers, we take for granted. You know, we, we just, well, I'm saying, but we forget. This is really important. Um, here's some scriptures, Romans 8, 1 through 2. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin of death. And then there's 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And then Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know, fear, worry, regret, shame, and guilt all have one thing in common. They are heavy, and they are heavy burdens to bear. And the way I compare it to me, it's like, you know, my daughter will be starting to run track soon and it's like, she's a sprinter and it's like, she's getting ready to get on the finish line and she's about to go. And, and then we put 20 pounds or 40, 50 pounds of weight on her back. Now say, now you run just as fast as you did, you know, before carrying those weights, you know, but the thing is, um, God releases us from those heavy hitters. You know, many of us, we struggle with that. We str struggle with the guilt and the shame. We know we're forgiven, but we still see the evidence of our sin. We see um, what our sins, the, you know, the circumstances, because we, cause God, God delivers us, but he doesn't always take away uh, the consequences. So we see the consequences and the Satan's like, see how bad you were, see how dirty you were, see how ugly and nasty you were. But God's like, I am releasing you from all that. And, um, and it's through his love and grace that he does that. And I think for me personally, regret um, uh, has always been my biggest hurdle uh, to clear. I would keep looking back and say, if I woulda, coulda, shoulda, man, what would have happened? And a lot of times when I find myself keep looking back, keep looking back, well, what happens is that I begin to feel that diminished self-worth and confidence. So if I keep looking back and say, I wish I would have, then I'm missing today, right now, opportunity to move forward. And I think that's why Romans 8, 1, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus resonates with me along with Romans 8, 28, where it says that I, he can make all things work together for my good. All is all. That means the things I did right and the things I did wrong. He's able to say, I can make all of this work for your good, Crystal. And those two scriptures is what helped me just push past. You know, I am not going to be burdened down with regret. I am going to move forward because God has a purpose and a plan he still wants to fulfill. And, and you know, maybe there was some calling and maybe there was some destiny I missed because of sin, but it doesn't condemn me to uh, living a life of, of, of regret and fear and guilt. Matter of fact, once I ask God to forgive me and release me, man, I'm off to go. What, what you got next? You know, I got God is great. He doesn't, he doesn't just have one thing. He has, okay, if that didn't work, I got something else for you to do, you know? So F, we're forgiven by God. R, we're released from fear, regret, worry, and anxiousness. And um, E is to experience the favor and grace of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ um, may rest upon me. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Michelle. Uh, Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. 
In Psalms 90, uh, 17, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And then Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. You know, when I read those scriptures about grace and favor, who, you know who always comes to my mind is uh, David. You know, David was just a shepherd taking care of the sheep, and God said, that's the one I want to use. And you know what? David, um, David did some great and mighty things, you know, in, in military and defeating Goliath and um, desiring to build a temple for God. And, you know, he wrote most of Psalms, and he's just he was just very gifted in that. But, you know, he also murdered a, an innocent man and took the man's wife. You know, he also went up against what God said and, and caused um, the people to die of plague. You know, he wasn't perfect, but the Bible says the favor of God was on him. And I look at us and I look at our lives and, you know, I've, I've heard it uh, said in at least two or three songs, favor, favor ain't fair, you know, and look at our lives. And I know for my life, um, a lot of times people have said to me, you know, Crystal, how it's amazing how how far you've made it, you know, um, in five years and raising your children and finding a job and holding things down and the kids are doing OK. But I always have the same answer. Grace in favor of God, because you know what it is we can't earn it. You can't just be good and like, OK, now God's going to give me grace. Grace in favor. It, grace is unmerited favor, meaning God's just saying, I'm giving this, this to you just because I love you. It don't have to do anything with what you do. And as a mom, I understand it. I think I've shared with you all before. I've gone to visit my daughter um, from college, and I'll ask her, okay, what kind of things do you need from the grocery store? And, and my kids, you know, they're... Um, they know that, you know, mom's, mom's just trying to make it, you know. Oh, just get me a few things, mom. Well, while I'm in the store, I get the things they ask for, but I throw in extra. And I throw in extra, you know why? Because I love them. And I'm human. I'm earthly. I'm not God. I'm not the creator. You know what I'm saying? How much more does God look on our lives and say, you know what? I'm going to surround her with favor and grace as she going and as she coming. I'm favor and grace on her job, favor and grace in her community. And why? Not because I'm perfect, because far from it. But I'll tell you what, it's because he loves me. And it's because I'm his child. And that's how he feels about you too. And that's one of the things that we're free. We're free to have that. You know, we're free to have his grace and favor as believers. Sets us apart. So forgiven by God, um, released from regret, fear, worry, shame. E, experience the grace and favor of God. And then the other E, excelled peace beyond our understanding. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, for his mind is stayed on you. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, it's interesting because the world is constantly, constantly seeking peace. But it remains elusive because of the hardness of men and women's hearts. But yet in Christ, we have an incredible peace that we ourselves can't even understand, you know? He gives us peace in the midst of confusion, disappointment, misunderstandings, and chaos. He steadies our feet on the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ, because he knows all, and through the Holy Spirit, he comforts and calms our inner being so that we can do what we need to do, whether it's work, whether it's taking care of our kids, no matter what it is we have to do, it could be total chaos. And we're like, okay, Jesus, steady my feet. I need that peace that passes all understanding. And I mean, just like many of you, I got issues front, front, back, and sideways. It's just, you pick any area of my life and I could tell you, whoop, there's a chaos there. And yep, there's something going on there. And um, I realized early on, I'm like, I can't live, you know, trying to put out every fire, every situation in my life. At some point, I just have to surrender and say, God, bring your inner peace because I can't change people. Um, but I can I can change my response to people. Um, when other people are frantic, I can remain calm. When other people are angry, I don't have to give anger back to them because of the peace that the Holy Spirit puts in my heart. You know, being free in Christ is a great gift for each one of us who desires to know God. 
And I just want to just encourage you um, uh, to walk in the freedom that God has given you. Just like when I started, you know, this uh, teaching and I was talking about, you know, hearing somebody going through situations that are similar to mine, but recognizing it's because of my freedom in Christ, it's because he set me free. Yeah, I got the same problem you got, but I'm getting there. I'm getting through it. And I'm not getting, I'm getting through it without being bitter and angry and launching out on people. And it's not because I've been so good. It's because God is keeping me and he's uh, blessing me. And uh, I don't want us to forget that when we're going throughout this week. It's so easy. It's like a, there's a comment I've heard at work about unconscious bias. And I think many times as believers, we have this unconscious bias. We see the people around us and we see how they are coping with their problems with drinking and smoking and illicit affair, affairs. And it's easy to sit back and say, man, that's jacked up. Why are they doing that? I got money problems. I got spouse problems. I got children problems. But maybe it's because of the grace and favor of God that you aren't out there on the street or you aren't there drinking and smoking and, and doing drugs to cope with life. It's because of the grace and mercy that you find in the freedom of Christ. And so I just want to encourage you, walk in that freedom. Be the light that God has called us to be. Be the salt. I'm not just saying it to you, I'm saying it to myself as well, because many times our flesh gets so wrapped up in people and we get easily offended and we forget it's God who's keeping us. It's God who sustained us, who woke us up in the morning, who got us dressed, got us on that job. It's because of the Lord. One more thing before I finish. You know, one of the things that uh, I always say to people um, all the time, I don't know how people do it without Christ. I look at some of the craziness that I've gone through and I'm like, if without Jesus, I don't know where, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know where my kids would be without Christ. And so when we see people around us who don't know him, we are that light. We are the Jesus. We may be the only Jesus these people see. So let us respond with kindness. Let us not um, return evil for evil, but return good for evil because of who we represent. And number one, because you're free and they're not. All right? This is Crystal from DaughtersTheCreator.com. Thank you for joining me, Angela. Uh, love you guys and look forward every week to sharing what God puts on my heart. And I'm just like thrilled that you all even check in. So have a blessed week in the Lord. Stay warm. Stay dry. Bye for now.